and then there's questions as to whether or not someone is married or legally separated and and basically divorced for the purposes of the tax code in which case if they were they would be going from married to head of household if they got divorced or something or to single so those are kind of like the gray areas the gray areas often uh, revolve around cu custody issue kind of situations where you've got these gray areas and so your idea that I would get in mind is that there's a hierarchy of filing statuses and I would think of them in two categories you've got married and non-married usually it's a pretty straightforward thing to to assign the the category of the filing status and then where those gray areas apply that's when you dig into the detail and you got to do some research and make sure the, that you got things straightened out on it so for information about uh, marital status you can see publication 501 so single you can check the single box at the top of form 1040 or 1040 sr if any of the following was true on december 31st 2022 notice the date that we're using here december 31st 2022 the end of the year so as of you know the end of the year because things obviously could change throughout the year so that's kind of an important key sometimes if you talk about someone getting married versus being single then what if someone got married in the in the middle of the year again we're typically talking uh was true on december 31st of 2022 so uh you were never married so we're talking single status so if you got married again on december 31st you would have been married for all of 2022. note that getting married is a is a huge tax event uh, so obviously you don't want to make the decision to get married just based on taxes or I don't think that would be the best thing to do although you know sometimes people do that kind of thing sometimes but it is something that you would want to uh, take into consideration because it can be a shock usually we don't want to have of course getting married be a negative tax impact because that would be a disincentive to marriage and it's usually not for like most like middle income individuals but you can imagine situations especially with these refundable credits where you have a situation where people get married and they could lose some of those refundable credits and actually be in a, a worse overall tax uh, situation which can be kind of a shock so so if those are like the the child tax credit and the earned income tax credit being a couple of the big ones so you want to kind of uh, be uh, aware of that and if you're and then you can plan when you're going to get married right you could say okay well maybe i'll take one more year of 2022 as filing separate if it's actually a better tax situation and get married maybe in in 2023 or something uh, versus if I'm going to have a benefit of getting married, maybe I get married in 2022 so I can get, you know, one more, that one year within the tax year of getting married or something like that. So you were legally separated according to your state law under a decree of divorce or separate maintenance. So then you can have a situation where what if they were married and then they separated, they got divorced. Divorce. Mm -hmm. Again, the divorce happens if it happens before the end of the year december 31st 2022 then you can file as you know separated or divorced even though you were technically married up until that point now here's where all the gray area comes in on the divorce side of things because different states have different laws to say when someone is divorced or legally separated so you're gonna you can run into these gray areas of well these people are married they didn't have a formal divorce but they've been living apart for a long point in time and then it could come down to well does the state law say that they are legally separated and so forth as to whether or not they're under the married category which means they would have to file you would think married filing joint or married filing separate or if they're legally separated which would mean you would think they would have then the capacity to file single or head of household that's where the question that's where the gray area comes in so but if at the end of 2022 your divorce wasn't final and inter uh, interlocutory degree you are considered married and can't check the box so you were widowed before uh january 1st 2022 and didn't remarry before the end of 2022 but if you have a child you may be able to use the qualifying surviving spouse filing status so if you were married and you didn't get divorced but sadly there was uh you were widowed uh and, you know a spouse died then 
the question is, from a filing status standpoint, does that revert you back to the filing status of uh, of single, or does it allow you to get the the qualifying surviving spouse, qualifying widow, widower, usually to get the more favorable filing status of a qualifying surviving spouse, you would need to have a child in play. Now, if you remarry, then of course, that would mean if you were able to file as a qualified widow, widow were, or, or qualifying surviving spouse, what it is now called, then you no longer can qualify for that because now you'd be married again, which means that you would now be filing as a married filing joint or married filing separate. Those would be your options at that point.